All right, so as, um, as Michael said, I'm here presenting tonight because Michael didn't know how to properly use this term, uh, so I'm trying to help him straighten that out. I've had a lot of people tell me they know what modern C++ means because they've read it. And by that, what they mean, of course, is uh, Alex's, or um, um, Andre's uh, book uh, where he coins the term modern C++. And in fact, if you'll notice, he even tells, it what that, tells us what that means. It means generic programming and design patterns applied, which is, which is basically Alex Stefanoff and the gang of four, right? So all we do is design pattern, some angle brackets, we're done. We done it. That's what it is. That's we're ready to move on. Michael, did that did that help? Any questions? Fastest lightning talk in the world. Actually, I I have one. I have a question, and my question is, on that uh, modern C++, is it possible that modern is not modifying C++, but is actually modifying design? I mean, after all, that's right there on the cover. This is a a book about design. That's actually what Andre's talking about. He's talking about modern design. He's not talking about modern language. In fact, um, I think we know this because if you look at, the, look at the, the highlights of C++ history, you see that modern C++ design came after the standard by quite a, uh, quite a few years. Um, also, his book didn't really depend, and other techniques he talked about actually depended on any new language features. Actually, what, what strikes me as looking at the the major releases here is that there's this huge, this huge gap between the initial release and the second release, and contrast the not only shorter but much more regular releases that, that follow that. So the question is, why is it that that gap was so long? Uh, it's a decade longer than the other releases, and it was actually called C++ OX because everyone was expecting it to come out in the aughts, right? And it must be because the committee was lazy, right? No, of course not. We know that when 11 came out, there was a ton of stuff in there. The committee was working hard. It was probably because the committee was so small. Well, it's smaller then than it is now, but that's not the reason. Everybody knows the real reason, right? It was the uh, concepts yo-yo. You put your concepts in, you take your concepts out, and you shake them all about. No. <laughs> that, is, that is not the reason either. To understand the reason, we're going to have to go back in time to what uh, what 98 was like, and, and we're spoiled now with, uh, w in our time frame, we expect that tool, tool providers are tracking the standard very closely. We, we expect that when a new standard comes out, we may even have an implementation before the, the ink is dry, right, or shortly after. That's what we expect. But, but back in 1998, and this was not controversial, people were expecting that it would take four or five years before we would have a standards conforming implementation. So given this, there's a very important question that the standards committee has to ask, and that is, are we gonna, are we gonna create new features to add to a language that no one's ever used? There's no user feedback at all on the standard that came out in 98, in 98, and nobody can use it. So the standards committee did something else. They focused on bug fixes. So the, so the minor release, the dot dot release that came out in C++03, didn't add any new features, no library. What they did was they clarified the language. They tried to get rid of contradictions and things like that. OK, so given that, why is there no C++ 06, right? I mean, we know that a release can be done in three years. That's at least enough time to give us hash, right? Um, but, but no, that didn't happen. And why? Well, in the middle of the decade, the committee actually voted to stop accepting new suggestions. And this was after they had, this is just a subset of the suggestions they had already accepted. And the way they were processing things then, the philosophy was, we will ship when the features are standardized, even if that takes 13 years, all right? The process now is, the philosophy now is, we ship what's ready every three years. And that change had a huge dramatic impact on how often we have standard releases the difference between 13 years and three years. So this has actually created two C++ user bases. One C++ user base thinks that C++ is Latin. It's a dead language. It doesn't change. People still use it. The Vatican uses it. <laughs> Biologists use it. But it's dead. It doesn't change anymore. Um, then there are also people who are tracking the changes. They've made the transition. These teams have bought into C++ 11. Um, I don't really have any numbers here, but my guess is this is probably a larger and perhaps much larger 
number of teams. They're not the vocal ones, they're not the ones that you hear about at conferences, but I think numerically those are a lot of people. So, um, this is an exaggeration, it's not really true, but my assertion is nobody's using C++11. Why is that? Because the people who haven't made the, the transition, of course, aren't using 11, but the teams that made the transition to 11 didn't stop there. They're tracking, they're using 14. My assertion also is that we are never again going to see as big a change between any release as we saw with 11. Because in three years, it's just not gonna have the impact that it did. Furthermore, what we see is that these environments, that everything is different. A team that is still locked in classic C++, in old C++, they have different skill sets, different, cool, different tools, even a different outlook about what it means to be programming in C++. And I think we need to have non-pejorative names for them to separate them. And the names I will say is classic C++ and modern C++. Um, and I say the boundary is C++11. Again, this release, I will argue, is, is the greatest impactful release in the history of C++ and in the future of C++. We will never again have a release that has this much impact on the way we, uh, on the way we code our language. And it also divides the community between the people who are using modern and the people who are dark matter programmers using classic C++. <laughs> So here it is, classic C++, pre-11, modern C++, 11 or later. All right, I'm hearing the, accept the objections already. Um, modern C++ isn't just a matter of the compiler that's used. I mean, after all, you can take a well-written C program and compile it in C++. Does that make it C++? No, of course not. That doesn't make it C++. Um, but it isn't just a set of language features that you use. I mean, could I ask, for example, what's your FU? That means, of course, functor utilization, right? Oh, wait, wait. Jackie says I'm not supposed to use that kind of language. So, um, so I won't say anything about functors. Uh, my conclusion is that good modern C++ means writing that the, the clearest, best architected type safe code that you can without compromising performance by exploiting all the features available from C++11 or later. So does that help, Michael? Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so Michael's gonna come up here now and try to tell you that everything I said was wrong, but we all know better, don't we? Thank you very much.